So it's, it's, it's my pleasure uh, to be here with you. So I, I thank um, the coordination of the graduate program, our graduate program, for inviting me to, to give you this talk today, which is uh, actually a plenary talk that I gave at the annual meeting of the Brazilian Chemical Society at the end of May. Uh, with uh, small differences, it's uh, still the same talk. So today I'll be talking about what we do in our laboratory uh, of electrochemistry related to the environment. And if we are talking about the environment, from my point of view, we have to talk about what is the underlying background. So what is causing, what is behind all the different environmental problems that we are having? And from my point of view, this is the main problem. The main problem, from my point of view, is the explosion of the population of humans in the planet. As you can see here, we were about 1 billion people in 1800, and just recently we passed 7 billion. There is a discussion whether we passed 7 billion last October, according to the United Nations, or this last March, according to, to the United States uh, Bureau, Census Bureau. Anyway, we are now more than 7 billion people in the planet. And as you can see, there is a, a large acceleration is starting in the, in the 20th of last century. There is a, a change in the slope of the growth. And if we keep this growth, we would be 16 million. 16 billion people by the end of this century. Of course, things, have, things are changing, and there is a discussion of what type of growth we are having, whether we are having what is called the low growth, the high growth, or the median growth. It looks like we are having the median growth. So most probably we will be peaking 10 billion people just before the end of the century, we will be 10 billion people. So between now and, 20 and, and the next century, three more billion people will be added to the population. And one interesting fact is that two-thirds, two billion people will be added in Africa. So Africa will be the region of the world where there will be a population explosion in the next decades, mostly due to improvements in health care and also sanitary conditions. Well, if we have this large increase in population, along with the increase in population, we have the Industrial Revolution, and we started using carbon. We started using coal. So we had, we started increasing the emissions of carbon to the atmosphere until about here, it was mostly coal, and then we start using liquid, liquid fuels, and from about 1950, we also start using gas fuel. So as you can see, there is a, an explosion in the emissions of carbon to the atmosphere. And of course, since the, the end of the 50s, in Hawaii, at the peak of the Mauna Loa, there is an observatory of uh, an American institution where they measure CO2 continuously. And as you can see, from 1960 to now, there has been a growth of more than 20%. Since I was born, the growth is now over 30%. And this is very recent data. As you can see here, is an explosion of the data. Most probably, we will be reaching 395 milliliters per cubic meter by the end of this year. So, and this is related to what is, there is a discussion, climate change. Okay, the oscillations here 
are related to, to seasons. And since, since it's, it's in the northern hemisphere, you can see that it's coming down now because summer is started. So a lot of growth, a lot of uptake of CO2 by plants, by new, by new plant. So it goes down all the way here and then this oscillation is uh, with the seasons, okay? Well, there is another explosion also. The explosion, all these people need food. So we need fertilizers to produce more food. As you can see here, there has been, there has been a growth in the use of nitrogenous fertilizers. It has been mul multiplied by almost 10, the use of nitrogen. And Professor Arnaldo Cardoso, who is in the Institute of, Institute of Chemistry nearby in Araraquara, uh, has been studying the nitrogen cycle. And we live in a region surrounded by sugarcane fields where a lot of fertilizers is used. So there is a lot of emission from the ground of oxygen, NOx, oxygen, um, nitrogen oxides. And nitrogen oxides interact with UV light and produce ozone. And according to Arnaldo Cardoso, in this region, sometimes the concentration of ozone in the atmosphere is higher than it is in Sao Paulo city because of the use of fertilizers around the cities here. Along with, there is also an explosion in the use of non-metallic minerals, biomass, of course, fossil, fossil energy carriers, and metal ores. As you can see, from 1980 to 2020, there will be an increase in the use of non-metallic minerals of, of over 100%. 200% in metal ores. So, and this, of course, you know, mining, with mining comes a lot of problems, a lot of pollution problems, a lot of degradation of the environment. Just recently, well, this year, there is what is called the Blue Planet Prize, which is the equivalent of the, of the Nobel Prize for the environment, for the environment, and the, and, the, and the two guys, one from Switzerland, the two persons, one from Switzerland and one from Canada, who developed the concept of footprint, environmental ecological footprint, uh, earned the prize this year, the Blue Planet Prize. And the, the ecological footprint is actually defined here, and it gives us an idea of the capacity of the planet to absorb what we humans are generating or changing in the environment, generating as waste or changing in the environment. As, as you can see here, two or three years ago, we already needed 30% extra of a planet for the planet to be able to absorb what is being generated as waste and as damage in our planet. And if we continue in the same train that we are now, by 2040, we will need two planets. So we will be generating waste and damage that for the planet to recover, it would have to have twice the capacity that it actually has. The ideal would be for us, for humanity to change its lifestyle and for us to go back to an equilibrium. But that's, that's a, a very difficult... Uh, the biocapacity and ecological footprint. This is an interesting uh, also data. So the biocapacity is the capacity that one region of the world has to regenerate the environment, and as you can see here, the largest biocapacity is in North America, but the ecological footprint is already beyond its value. 
It has the largest biocapacity because of the large areas of the United States and Canada, but because of the lifestyle in North America, the ecological footprint is already almost 50% larger than the biocapacity. And you can see here that our situation is, is quite good in Latin America because of the large areas of Brazil and Argentina, because of the Amazonic region, etc. We have uh, the third largest biocapacity in the world, and we are still using only 50% of the biocapacity with our footprint, which is very good. You can see here that Africa, because although Africa is quite a large continent, has a very low biocapacity because of, the, of its geological characteristics. Um, a lot of deserts, so low capacity. And with, with the population explosion that is coming, so the footprint, the ecological footprint is going to be exploding in Africa compared to, as you can see, there are regions in the world where there is still biocapacity available, but the sum is already below at least 30% or more uh, from the footprint. So at that moment in 2005, 24 countries already exceeded their biocapacity. Here is the number of species that are being threatened. And of course, it's growing also, the number of species because of the different changes in the environment, etc. And recently, in 2009, Rockström and others, uh, people, uh, scientists that are involved with the environment, they came out with uh, the idea that we have nine planetary systems. And they wanted to evaluate what is the, the capacity of the planet in each system is represented in green here. Okay? Of course, this is relative. And as you can see, in red is where we are now in the usage or in the damage of that system. As you can see, in climate change, we already exceeded. In use of nitrogen, the nitrogen cycle, we are well over because of, of fertilizers. And we are also well over in biodiversity loss. You can see that chemical pollution has not been evaluated, evaluated yet, and atmospheric aerosol loading has not evaluated, been evaluated yet. One important thing here is that although there are nine planetary systems, they are all interconnected. So if there is a, a, a change in land use, this, this change in land use may cause biodiversity loss. It may cause climate change. It may cause loss of water, so it, will, it may change the availability of fresh water and so on. So everything is really interconnected. So the question is, we humans are really changing the environment very fast, in a very fast rate. So now there are some people that are discussing whether we have arrived at another geological era. In principle, we are at the Holocene.